Hey y'all, it's been a little while since my last update. I've been out for a work trip as well as um, I fell off my motorcycle and dislocated my shoulder. You know, those kind of things stop the development cycle just a little bit. Let's, so let's get into the things I've done. Um, some of this footage is a little older and some of it's been new. So uh, what I've done so far is get the uh, uh, printer all wired. So the wires are running. I got my end stops in. I've got my entrapment system for the steam that comes off the hot water because I don't want that going into my filament. So I've got a temporary solution right now. Then I got a little uh, exhaust fan that I'm going to use to pull out all of the steam and just pump it out to someplace safe. Uh, when I'm doing that, I'm losing water slowly, so I need to keep a track of my water level as I do that. Thanks for tuning in to another update of the Autocrafter build. The filament holder is pretty basic here. Just drilled a couple holes in it, went through and goes into T-nuts on the other side there, and then just welded it to this piece of one by square tubing. And the filament itself, whoa, I'm supposed to film there, is held on C-clamp here. So low tech, doesn't need to be high tech for this one. And it's pretty sturdy. I like it. So this thing is going to allow me to do the full five foot prints. What's so special about this? It's the Z stop sensor or end stop sensor. So I can do a bed leveling sequence that allow me to dial in my first layer or half of the first layer won't stick. So um, this way the printer can know exactly where to start the first layer. So everything after that is nice and clean. Okay, made a little bracket for it. Just bent, uh, bent some sheet metal up. Drill some holes, cut a little slot for adjustability. And that should be pretty cool. So it'll be just a one bolt holder. So the bolt just goes right through the slot and then I can move it up and down if I need to. Dial in the, where it wanted to be. So I've got this sky hook, I guess I'm calling it, wiring system. So think fishing pole with wires on it. Let me take you around to that side. It is zip tied to a little metal rod that provides some buoyancy skywards for it. And it'll lay down over there and then get held up when it comes on this side, and then runs back into the control, so the control box. This is what it looks like when the X carriage hits its end stop. And just sort of like has a little umbilical cord. And then all the wires just run right off of it, straight down and over. Oh, this is so cool. As the water reaches the full point, it kind of feels like 
you're putting on a screen protector for a cell phone. All right, here's my temporary solution to keep the edges sealed as the water heats up and cools down. And then I'll have a vent hole in the back. But this stuff is pretty darn sticky, can handle the temperatures. Quite an expensive roll though. I don't care about showing you what I paid for this. Um, it's the top one there. So a 3M, two and a half inch, a UL listed foil. UL is a rating for ducting and um, uh, certification for the stuff that you can use in a washer and on a dryer, really. Anything that carries heat, there's a certain UL rating. UL is like a something laboratory, um, and they're, they're an independent tester of products. And to get a UL certification is what you need for um, your standard washer dryer stuff. It'll say something like, uh, UL listed and then the, then their testing number uh, for what it is. So uh, when you're buying stuff for washer and dryer, uh, fun note, make sure it's UL listed um, or you'll fail an inspection later on if you have to be inspected for whatever. Anyway, um, I'm gonna use this stuff so because it should be able to handle up to 300 degrees um, and um, that's gonna be around 100, 100 degrees Celsius. That's, that's gonna be able to handle all the, um, that's gonna be able to easily handle the temperatures I'm gonna be going up to. It's like a double-sided tape. It's basically tin foil, aluminum foil, uh, with an adhesive on it, and then it's separated by this paper. So I'm gonna try that and see how it works for the temporary solution. I've got another solution in my head, but it's expensive, and I don't have the money to, impl 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 to uh, get it going right now, but in the future. Check this out, look how cool this is. That polypropylene becomes translucent when water gets up against it. Normally, where those air bubbles are, uh, you can see that. Normally where these air bubbles are, that's the normal color of it, but when it's got water behind it, it becomes sort of a clearish plastic. Pretty cool. I like the way it looks. As I expected, this is how the water looks after about two and a half weeks of it sitting in there with the steel bars in there. So it's just slowly rusting and um, making my water pretty terrible. Uh, whether that's gonna affect my heater, um, I, pro I think it probably will actually. So I might have to do something different in the future. But uh, this is what it's gonna look like pretty normally. Um, the water's probably gonna be about that color. I think I have, I have some ideas about what I can do to spruce that up a bit. Uh, one is to replace these with aluminum or um, stainless steel versions and um, add, add a better filtering system, maybe cycle out the water more often. Now all I have left is to figure out the software on the BL Touch to get it actually to send me the points data. Uh, right now it's feeding me nothing for some reason, so I need to figure that part out and um, I need to mount my exhaust vent somehow. I've got a part in CAD that I could just weld up pretty quickly, so I just need to get that done and mounted. Uh, then tie that exhaust fan for the steam coming off this thing into a relay, uh, so I can control that off the printer, and then I'm ready for my first print.
So stay tuned for that. Thanks y'all.